I just sent an uh, uh, email to Steve. Oh, yeah, let's get started because Barry's, uh, we need Barry you know, on here. <laughs> I'm ready. Go ahead, Eric. Okay. Um, thanks for uh, joining us this morning. Uh, this is our first training activity for Wine on the Vine. And uh, Aaron is our, uh, at Gary, uh, are both program co-chairs, along with Alex uh, Pomerantz, who uh, could make it here this morning. You know, he had a, a, a last minute change in plans. So what we want to talk about this morning is how to get the Wine on the Vine program started, uh, getting, um, you know, so how the clubs implement it and, um, and what are the uh, basics. So Aaron, uh, we're going to make you the presenter and um, and take it away. Well, let's let's let, I'm going to bring it over to Gary first uh, to do the intro uh, on that. Sure, so Gary. Let me ask you this: Is there? I, I, I'm Jonathan Rosenberg. I'm over here in Baltimore, and I think one of you all reached out to um, to Steve Levin, who's the president. Yes, of South yes. South that you're you're. Yeah. We were expecting you or or Steve to be on. Good, thanks. Yeah. So. You know, Steve sent me a, um, I guess I'm the uh, lucky one who decided to respond to the email that I would pop on to this. Excellent. Thank You're you. welcome. So can you just tell me a little bit about this? Well, that's what we're... We are. This is the whole point yeah, of, we're gonna of doing it. We're going to start the whole process of, you know, you're going to... That's exactly what this meeting is all about. Okay. Because it seems like you all know each other. you all from the New York area? No, we're... No, no. 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 <laughs> Okay. Uh, introduce uh, Barry uh, Oslik is 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 down the street from you. He's uh, physics. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, I'm here at, at I'm also affiliated with physics. Um, uh, Aaron is the um, is is um, from uh, Metro North, as is Jay Steinmetz. Uh, that's in the New York area. Um, and uh, Bob Watts is the head of Seaboard, uh, is, is the president of Seaboard region. He's in Virginia. Okay. So this was a Seaboard uh, webinar that we've invited other clubs uh, from the other areas to join us because this is, it's a fairly important program for, for FJMC. So, um, Joe, uh, I, I know you're, I see you, and Mayer, I see you. Uh, can you guys, uh, and Tom Sudo, who's the president of FJMC, is also on. Can, um, quickly, Joe, can you uh, introduce yourself as to where you're from? Sure. I'm uh, with Congregation Shari Tikva in Beachwood, Ohio, and uh, act as uh, president of the men's club. Great. Oh, thank you for joining us, Meyer. Hi, I'm uh, from Knoxville, the Greater Knoxville Jewish Men's Club, and I'm the first vice president of the Anshe Dorham region. And Tom? I just had a mute there. Tom Shudo, I'm the president of the FJMC, and I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, the hometown of Joe Rett. <laughs> and, 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 and we have Gary uh, Smith, who is our, our, the chairman, of, one of the co-chairs of, of the program. Gary? I'm from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and sort of put this program together initially with uh, the CEO of uh, Israel. Um, we've been trying to get this program off the ground, and uh, it's an exciting program. So. Um, it's okay, Eric. I'll just kind of go into an introduction. And uh, Gary, I'll... just a second. I think we're going to make it clear who Jonathan Rosenberg is. Actually, oh, he's from sorry. Bethel, Baltimore, right. which is a club that uh, was uh, affiliated um, once upon a time. And we're talking to them about affiliating again, but we've included them in all our Seaboard FJMC activities in the last uh in the last year or so and so jonathan's a board member right of uh yeah i'm a board club. member i'm a former vice president of the uh, men's club so i've been part of this uh, men's club group for about six seven years and right now i'm the chairperson of the membership committee so right now steve would actually also be on this <coughs> we're all taking turns of handing out mock scores since we're all doing um, we're doing um high holidays virtually 
Okay, thanks. So back to Gary. Sorry for interrupting you. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so I just want to say a few words and then, uh, of introduction, and then uh, we're going to show a little short video which puts things in perspective, and then Aaron's going to have a, a, a discussion and questions. So I want to say, first of all, this moment in time is a defining moment for our clubs, for our regions, and for FJMC, and I really mean that seriously. Believe it or not, it's not about FJMC initially. You are FJMC. You guys are the ones that make up FJMC. And we recognize that. We, we are listening to what our members said in our surveys, that we need to have an Israel program. Your focal and one of your top leaders is all, all in on this initiative. Eric has done a remarkable job. So has Bob. The three boxes necessary for a successful program that our committee identified was a program supporting Israel, a program supporting the environment, and a sustained fundraising initiative for our clubs in our regions. Wine on the Vine, again, you are FJMC, and we are working very hard. Uh, this is a collaborative initiative that we are kicking off as we speak. Of course, that's called Wine on the Vine. It gives a great initiative to support the wineries in Israel that has far-reaching implications for all of us. In this brutally pandemic time, when many clubs and regions and individuals have been struggling for programs and interaction, Wine on the Vine will hopefully re-energize all of us in a team effort to keep us all on the cusp of success. For our committee, Wine on the Vine has been a labor of love. Aaron will go into the detail of the program and then we will have questions. I think once you begin buying the vines, you will love this program. One of the first ways to get support in planting these vines is to get your rabbi on board. I gave both of our rabbis a wine certificate and they loved it. And then later on, I went to them and they are fully supportive of the program. So now, Eric, if you want, could you show the video? And then Aaron will go into the initiative. Uh, Bob, you're going to run that? Which one? We want to do the... Uh, we want to we do the, uh, the main video. That the, long, added, the longer the, one, right? The, the little bit longer version, yeah. Okay. What is Wine on the Vine? All right. What? I got to share my screen. Um, okay, just a sec. What is Wine on the Vine? Wine on the Vine is planting grapevines in Israel the way your grandparents planted trees. For more than a century, we planted trees. Okay, here it comes, sorry. What is Wine on the Vine? Wine on the Vine is planting grapevines in Israel the way your grandparents planted trees. For more than a century, we planted trees is a great way to connect to Israel. But there's a problem. We've been planting the wrong trees in the wrong places. Planting grapevines is like planting trees, but better. When you plant a grapevine, you participate in Israel's past, present, and future. You continue the original Zionist dream of cultivating the land while supporting Israel's blue wine industry that today includes almost 400 wineries and produces some of the finest wines in the world. Vines produce the wine that we use to concentrate our most important life cycle events, from a baby's breast to a bar of hot whisper to a wedding. Okay, was everybody able to see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good. Go. 
Okay, Aaron, you're up. Good morning. I give you a kiss, but everybody will see. Hold on. Aaron, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. I... Well, I was going to say, first of all, it's good morning, and thank you for being on the call. Uh, what I'm going to go through right now um, is a series of FAQs. The, these are, th this is information, questions that have come up over the last number of weeks, and I've put it together in a, uh, a more uh, concise manner. Uh, it should give you some of the background to it. Uh, it should also maybe answer some questions you may have if you know something about the program or not. I know Jonathan knows nothing about the program or maybe it's the first time he's heard about it. I'm going to encourage, because there's a lot of information here, I'm going to encourage, if there's a question at the moment, ask it because by the time I finish it, it may be difficult to go back or you may have forgotten it. So unless it's gonna take us off course, which I don't think it will, uh, if you do have a question, uh, do ask me. Um, the first question that comes up, I never heard of it. Never heard of one on the vine, who are they? Uh, and this is gonna reiterate what you saw on the, on the video. Uh, wine on the Vine is a, an Israeli nonprofit organization that supports the Israeli wine industry, but it also supports the arts and music and culture, other types of charities, and all through the purchase of these vines. Uh, by the way, I should mention, there's a lot of collateral material and what I am going through will be sent to Eric and Eric will forward it to you. So take your notes if you'd like, uh, but if you don't, uh, this information will be sent to you, um, you know, separately. How does Wine on the Vine work? The Wine on the Vine program allows individuals to plant grapevines in Israel. Uh, and what you do is uh, in somebody's honor or, or some kind of celebration or life cycle event, and it costs $18 for the vine. So you can plant a vine, cost $18, and what happens is that it uh, is in somebody's honor or some kind of event, uh, celebration or memorial or, or whatever that may be. Um, the question is what kind of honor? I just kind of mentioned that to you, cycle, right, life cycle events, a new job, graduation, it could be bar bar mitzvah gifts uh, from the men's club, uh, but anything that you think uh, you, you feel like you want to celebrate or want to, want to acknowledge could be used for wine on the vine. How will someone who's getting the honor know that they have a vine planted in their name? There are two ways. Uh, when you do this, it's all done online. And once you finish your process, an email is sent to the honoree immediately after the purchase. So that means you need to have when you do this, if you want to honor someone, make sure you have that email address. So was there a question? Yeah, come to the right place. <laughs> Say again? Was there a question or not? Okay. Uh, guys, if you can mute yourselves the, uh, while Aaron is talking, unless you have a question. Thank you. So the question was, how do they know, how does somebody know that they got honored? Uh, when you do it online, there's an email that's sent immediately to the person being honored or to the event being honored or whatever it is that you're trying to acknowledge. And as uh, Gary had mentioned earlier, that if you want, by the way, when you get to the acknowledgement, a PDF, uh, beautiful certificate comes up that you could print out. You could print it on your printer or if you want to use other material. Uh, I know that there are now with printers, you can use uh, not only uh, just regular paper, you can use other kinds of uh, items to, and, it, and whatever it is that you use can be printed uh, with a certificate. If you want, in addition to that printed PDF, uh, you can actually order at the time of purchase, you can also uh, order a printable, you can order a certificate that uh, they will send you from Israel. It will be a hard copy. There's a $5 extra charge for that, but it will come to you as a hard copy. 
Another question that's come up quite a bit is what is the connection with the FJMC and why are they promoting wine on the vine? Hey, Aaron? Yes? So if I don't have an email address for the person that I want to, that I want to receive this, it costs me an extra $5 for them to be notified. Is that correct? Well, if you don't have their email address, they will not get the printable one. You could print it out yourself. I mean, have it sent to you. you you'll actually get a copy of whatever your honoree is going to get. So you could actually print it out. So if you wanted to not spend the $5, you can actually print it out yourself and then hand it to the individual. I'm not sure how you're going to interface that, but if you don't want to do it that way and you have their address, then you can send it to them uh, with the $5, yes. Okay, thank you. Sure. So again, what is the connection? Um, Gary highlighted that in his opening comments, two areas. Uh, Hold on, Aaron, let me clarify that a little bit. Barry, um, you don't have to pay $5 unless you want a, a much print, a much nicer hard copy, printable hard copy to frame. Uh, you can actually, if somebody doesn't have an email address, put your email address on there and then you can print it out for them which would make it a lot easier. Okay. Okay, sorry. Yep, thank you. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought the, uh, the little nuance on it. Um, the FJMC, the reason we feel very strongly is the FJMC, and Gary kind of highlighted that in his opening remarks, which is this gives us the ability to, to support Israel in a very powerful way. It's also, it's a green initiative, uh, it talks about culture. It, it supports a lot of the activities that are going on with youth in, in Israel. And so this allows us to be able to connect to Israel in such a special way, the wine on the vine, and, and that uh, we did not have before. Um, in addition to that, uh, we want to support clubs. Uh, there's, there's a two-sided, you know, for a lot of times, I, I'm, you know, and I'm sure you've had that question come up, I know it comes up here in New York Metro as well, is what is the value of FJMC? What is it that you bring for, I'm putting up, you know, whatever it is in terms of my dues, I'm not sure what I'm getting back. So what we're trying to do is kind of reinvent or repurpose, understand what we are trying to do uh, in this new 21st century and where we're going. So it's trying to do several things. One of them is the screen initiative supporting Israel, but also we want to support uh, our clubs as well. So the Wine on the Vine program offers sustaining fundraising opportunities for the clubs to raise local revenue for their, for their club programs. So the question you're saying to me, how, how does that happen? So what happens when you purchase a vine for $18, um, a portion of that, that sale, a, por a portion of that purchase will go to the club, which is $3. Uh, $3 will go to the club uh, for every purchase. So if in a month um, your club sells 100, that's $300 that goes back uh, to, your, uh, to your clubs as, as, as well. Uh, there were two questions that came up regarding this. Want to know, is this money tax deductible? And also, where does this money go? There's $18. I just talked about $3 on this. Where does the rest of the money go? Uh, as I commented at the very beginning, uh, Wine on the Vine is a nonprofit. So here's the way it breaks down. All right, the club gets $3. Now, in the FJMC, we have a region. The region gets $1. A lot of uh, you know, things we're doing today, there may be other things that are going on. It supports the region with a dollar. FJMC International gets $2. Um, they do a lot, of the, a lot of the homework, a lot of the heavy lifting, a lot of the marketing, the websites and all of that. So that helps underwrite those costs. The, so that's $6. To plant the vine in Israel in your name costs $6. Now I know we're not talking about it here, but uh, the Wine on the Vine folks also support other charities in Israel and they take $3 of that $18 and they support other charities that go on in Israel. And then the remaining $3 has to do with the operating expense. Uh, the video you saw, they have a team there that does marketing for them. 
uh, that works and, and visits um, different areas uh, within Israel. In addition to that, uh, they are, are, we're talking now about having a number of individuals come here to the United States. And Adam, who happens to be the uh, leader of Wine on Vine, is, is thinking right now of coming to our convention in July. So when people ask how much of the monies are being uh, go to you know, charity, or how much of the, is being done for operating expenses, so less than 20% is being used for operating expenses. Are there any questions at this moment? Yes, yes. One other, one Jay? yes uh, you, you mentioned that th this is a nonprofit. Is the organization nonprofit or are the wineries nonprofit? Because I can't see any winery being business and not being profitable. The it is the, are, it is the, the, the wineries are a byproduct. It's the organization. The, the, the parent organization is called the Israel Innovation Fund, and they are a nonprofit. Within that, under that umbrella, there is the Wine on the Vine program. And the Wine on the Vine program is part of that nonprofit. So what we are dealing with are nonprofits. They, meaning the uh, Wine on the Vine or the Israeli Innovation Fund, take a portion of those monies and they donate it uh, back to charities. But they also will you know, give the winery six bucks for them to, to plant that vine. And that is you know, obviously not a nonprofit. That is a profit for the winery. However, they, uh, they, they look at that. I'm not sure how we can get it, you know. Uh, I, I agree with you, they're not a nonprofit uh, entity. Am I, any other um, Am I Aaron, Aaron, it's Tom, just, just to clarify. This is 100% tax deductible. Anybody who makes a donation uh, will get a receipt or they can print out a receipt if they want to from the, from the website. So it's the $18 is 100% um, uh, tax deductible, and again, and three dollars that goes back to the club and the congregation for whatever use you, you guys want to use it for. Uh, same thing for the region, and uh, so this, this is a great, really a great opportunity. And again, sure. they, they, they're they're providing wine on the vine is providing support to these wineries who you know who struggle a little bit, and this is where they they, they make sure they continue to to grow. Um, and question, I might also add that. Uh, if your region wants to do a wine tasting party, Adam will either do it in person at some point or he'll do it online. So just thought you guys would be interested in that. That's part of what they do is wine tasting parties. Uh, just to thank you, Tom, uh, by the way. Uh, one of the things you'll find is once you finish the transaction, you will get a receipt back as well as that uh, notification that this has been a uh, tax deductible or possible, depending upon how you look with your account, and obviously uh, that this yes. is a tax deductible uh, receipt. With the organization is a U.S.-based entity, and has so it's fully uh, uh, sanctioned by the IRS. It's a 501c3 with offices actually in Mason, Ohio. Uh, Guys, a quick Aaron, question. Uh, Jonathan is is uh, raising his hand here. Jonathan, I think you're on mute. Yeah. So my question is. I didn't catch the, um, the, the, I got the, the $6 to plant the vine in Israel. Yeah. And it was $3 to put something, and then it was $3 to support general operating expenses. What was the, the first $3 that you had said? Um, okay, so let, let me go through it again. The club gets $3. Right. So your shul, your club would get $3 for everything you do through your, your um, organization. Right. Uh, the region, Seaboard, gets a dollar. They do a lot of the heavy lifting. They get a dollar. Uh, FJMC International gets two dollars. They do also do a lot of heavy lifting. They do the website. They do a lot of the marketing. There's a lot of inf a lot of back information reporting, what have you. They get two dollars to plant right. the vine. So however you want to go. In Israel, it's your walk. is six dollars. That leads, uh, and they also an additional. Um, they give three dollars to Israeli charities, arts, culture, music. Uh, they work with a lot of youth organizations in Israel. They receive three dollars of the eighteen. That leaves three dollars for operating expenses. And again, they also do some of the marketing, as you saw with the video. And that's the um, opera, and that's where that goes to FJMC. No, no, that goes to Wine on Vine or the Israeli Innovation Fund. Okay. For they are doing. We we are. 
Yeah, you know, it's, it's sometimes when you do these things, it's hard to, everybody's at a different point in understanding this program. There are two entities here. One is the Israeli Innovation Fund, of which that's the umbrella for the wine on the vine. And they are working together with the FJMC. Each one of us, the two organizations, uh, are both nonprofits. And what we're trying to do is blend uh, the marketing, how do we market the support that we require, uh, a lot of the uh, uh, background information, uh, reporting, working with the vineyards and what have you. We're taking those tasks and we're separating them. Uh, what they do in Israel will cost $3 per vine. And that's the number I was just talking about. And for the monies that we share, we are doing whatever marketing uh, that we have, uh, as well as the monies that would go to the club and to the region. Mm -hmm. I know we're going over the same material over and over again, but I, I, I want to make sure that this is clear. Any other questions on this? Uh, and Aaron, if I can point out, because I've seen the longer video, that this is really a part of the Innovation Fund. It's, a, it's an effort to help Israeli businesses to get going too, right? Uh, such as yep. the wineries, right? What, uh, what, what prompt, you're right. What prompted Adam, if you ever, and, and I'm sure at some point all of you will have the ability with maybe to meet him or at least see him on video or, or Zoom or what have you. This guy is off the chart when it comes to passion for Israel. I mean, he really wants to, here's, a, here's an American from Cincinnati, Ohio, going to Israel uh, and uh, just, you know, immerse themselves in trying to do as much as he can. And once actually, and this is my opinion, uh, I know Gary knows him a lot better than I do, but my opinion, wants to go back to those early days of the Sabras, of what made Israel you know, great and to get the youth involved and what have you. And so his passion is what's driving this process. And he wants to help the vineyards. He wants to help the youth. He wants to help the arts and the culture where he thinks it's not getting the kind of support. He's wanting to do that. And, and as you talk to him, you'll see he has other things that he thinks needs to be supported in Israel. But that's what drove him to do this. To show his passion, every bit of money to keep this to start up this over the last two years came from his 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 uh, inheritance from his grandfather, so he's he's all in, as, as some of us are. I'm sure, like all of us, we have some very sharp people on our boards, our committees, and so forth. Is there a set of financials that that the wine on the vine or this um, Israeli innovation program produces? I'm sure some people are going to question, is this a real thing? Absolutely. Hello. You can go to GuideStar.org, GuideStar.org. It, it is a website that lists all nonprofits. Uh, Wine on the Vine has their tax returns on that site. Um, again, it's, they're relatively new, so the, the revenue and expenses are smaller. Mm -hmm. But it's, all, it's, all, it's a publicly, again, they, are, they, they file a tax return with the United States government. And that's all online. Again, and you can check them out, guidestar.org. Great, thank you, Tom. I have a question for everybody. Okay. Barry, uh, uh, you've been chomping at the bit here. Yeah, so, so uh, and this, this sounds like a nice program. From, a, from an acceptance standpoint in a congregation at this point, so Kuzikamuno, Sisterhood does uh, does cards that, that that you can send out for for occasions. We probably have in in, in Chizikamuno, I don't know, maybe thirty or forty different funds that you can contribute to to for for donations in honor of events and stuff. How do we push this through a congregation without stepping on everybody's toes? That's a good point, Barry, because Beth Ellis the same situation. Yeah, it is a good question. And, I, you know, I can't answer your question for your synagogue. I can tell you I'm here on Long Island. And the first step that I did was talk to the president of our men's club. And uh, we talked about how do we market it to, to our own audience. So the first thing we're doing is we're going to inform our own members of the men's club that we would like to do this for the reasons I was talking about earlier, about Israel uh, about the green initiatives, you know, the charities and what have you, and that we have the ability to get the $3. Uh, we're also going to be talking to our, our rabbi um, and letting him know about this particular program. And I would also advise, you know, talking to the uh, sisterhood. 
you know, be transparent. Uh, you know, there are, yeah, you, like you say, there may be 50 different organizations that are out there and this may be just one of those. But I think if we could focus on it, there's the ability to do a lot of good on, on both ends. And, and one of the things that we're gonna do here uh, is work with our uh, bar bar mitzvah families and talk to them uh, regarding, in, you know, instead of getting a cup, uh, you know, a, a wine cup for your bar or bar mitzvah uh, when you have that uh, celebration on the bima, we are, we are going to give from the men's club, we're going to give one of our certificates uh, in honor of that individual or baby naming, or there's going to be an announcement for engagement. It's going to be a process. Uh, let me tell you another thing we're going to do here, and I don't know if that's going to be any help in what you're looking at. We have a newsletter. Uh, right now, we are thinking about ways of creating an ad that promotes several things. One, it promotes the men's club, because I think sometimes what happens at the very, very local level, at the club level, people forget about what men's club and maybe do it together with the sisterhood about what these two important arms of the, of the especially now pandemic, of what you do, what these two organizations do uh, for, the, uh, for the shul. And part of that is the, uh, maybe in, in, in this piece is also talk about wine on the vine and it could be other, other programs. But the idea really is to give back a little bit and maybe to explain some of it and hopefully that, that creates at least the identity of this particular program, or at least of the men's club. And it's gonna be a process. It's not, there's not, you know, you may get hit on the first day. Well, no, you, it's, it's gonna be interference, you know, with, with this. Uh, and then you just let it die. Well, then it, then it will die. But it's gonna be something that's gonna take time for you to initiate. And you're not alone. You have a terrific guy in Eric as a focal, and he, he's local. You have Alex Pomerantz, uh, who's another great resource. Uh, we have two great resources here, you know, in terms of Gary and Tom to want to make this happen. So if you need more than that, we can do that. Uh, Adam, who is the, uh, the head of this whole program in Israel, um, he has offered a number of times to be on calls if you want to do Zoom calls. What I'm getting at is it's a marketing program. It's a communication program. It's, it's understanding what the program can do. And, uh, you know, it, you know, get it, listen, listen to the objections and then see how to get through it. The first uh, objection, Barry, uh, Aaron, let, me, let me answer that. And in in, in, in Aaron gave you a good answer, but I want to make it a little bit more specific. Number one, if you get your rabbi on board, rabbi is going to be all in. Number two, you may make a gift to some of those other parts of your synagogue, but this is a way of men's club being able to bring back some dollars into the club and also allowing, allowing your, your uh, men's club more exposure. Number three, and really important, it, it draws the youth. The very few programs we have draw the youth. And I can give you several examples on how to do that. And your passion and how much you believe in this program will go a long way to making this a success. If you make a donation to an, an arm of the synagogue, that's it. Nobody knows about it. It's just given. This is something that people can see, that you, your men's club, as Aaron said before, your bar and bat mitzvah kids can have a certificate in their names, which we did uh, on a national basis with uh, uh, Doug Sagerman's son's bar mitzvah. He matched, every since he saved a lot of money on his bar mitzvah, he uh, matched vines planted by FJMC members and, and anyone else that was on the Zoom, he matched that with vines that he bought. And so there's many different ways of, of handling this. Okay, uh, I mean, okay. I get one, it. One more thing. Um, I, I've Eric. got to drop off, Eric, we'll, we'll talk later about it. Yeah, one thing, I just wanted to say one thing before you, you fly, Barry. Um, I, I had the same concern you did about the number of charities that Pesic has. And you know that you know the number of places where uh, congregants can make donations. Uh, this thing covers two areas that most of the, the groups don't. Uh, one of them is sustainable, because it's planting, it, it's doing actual planting. It's it kind of on par with JNF. The other part is it's halachic, uh, in that there are some there's some real halachic poetry of planting a vine. In, in, in somebody's memory or somebody's, uh, or at the birth of somebody uh, growing up under their vine and fig tree. It's, um, it, it's a um, fairly uh, interesting uh, concept. Yep. So, All right. 
I, I, I get it. I'm, I'm just not sure how we sell it. But well, you, you so, and I can so talk can, later. Can, can, All right, before everybody you jump, take care. I've got to drop. Okay. Um, I, I think the important thing to realize here is this is much broader than just planting a vine. There's an opportunity here to really connect people with Israel, particularly people in their 20s and 30s who, you know, who, 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 ha who don't have the same kind of connection. You know, the men's club sponsors wine tastings. If you bring a bot, you know, once we're back in the synagogues, if, if every Shabbos, the men's club tried two different Israeli wines, I mean, whatever it is, or, or does brought together small groups of people to do wine tastings, you can really bring in and, and connect people to Israel in a way that we've not been able to do before. And that's, that's really exciting. And I think, you know, the wine on the vine and buying vines becomes very, very much a part of that. But, you know, you can, you're really making that kind of connection. And I, I was going to suggest, having thought about this for a little while since I first learned of the program, is a good audience at your synagogue might be to reach out to, you know, there's a certain group of really pro-Israel people who are active in supporting Israel, right? Like, you can distinguish it from those other, all those other funds and everything by, you know, we have a group of people who are big supporters of the, I don't know, it's backwards here, of the FIDF, right? Uh, who want to do things. And now it's so hard to support Israel. Now you can't go there, right? I mean, uh, it's it's tough time. So, you know, right. my plan for my synagogue is try to identify especially that audience, which the rabbi is part of, which a bunch of other people are part of. Okay, so take care, everyone. Guys, Thanks, I, have a, I have a moment. I have a question to ask you. I have a question to ask everybody. Uh, Aaron, Eric, Tom, do they supply the men's clubs with marketing supplies to promote wine on the vine? Yes. Um, there are marketing well, how materials. How do we get them? How will they supply it? We'll do that through, we'll send it to Eric. I'm sorry? We will, we will send it to Eric. Right now what we have are those videos that you just saw. There's a series of videos. We have a PowerPoint. Uh, we have some other material that gives you background. And we will be, be developing as more and more of these Zoom calls come up, more and more of this marketing material will be developed as we go forward. I would also- so, think, hey, hey, Aaron, why don't you give, the, the best piece we've got is the website. Why don't you give the website address? Here, here, well, I won't do it on this call. I will send it to Eric and he can forward it. Uh, not that I don't want to do it, I just don't know how to do it to get it to everybody. From Joe America. is from Ohio, so he can go to Carl Rubin too, right? For more information on this, so. And, and, and I'll, go to, I'll, I'll go to Tom Sudo. Or Tom Sudo, yeah, another. FJMC's website as well has has a uh, has some discussion on it. And look at Joe, look at what questions here. One is this, we all get these various cards and we can donate, you know, $18 here and there for all these various bar mitzvahs and bris and other simchas. So part of the marking materials, is there a printed card that we can actually give to um, possible buyers of these and say, here's a card, here's how you can um, sign up for this $18 a piece. But I had another question also is, what about buying the actual product? I think that would excite people if they could actually buy this um, wine that's produced in Israel. That's you, a can great question. That. Gary, you can do I'll that. You can do that. I would like Gary answer that question. So you can actually, number one, if you buy a bank of vines and you go to Israel, bank of vines is 10 vines. And you go to Israel, you'll get a bottle of wine from your winery. However, we're work, trying to work it out so you can get it here. The second way is if you go to uh, Isra, I-S-R-A, wines.com, and then the coupon code is FJMC, you can buy <laughs> bottles of wine from any of our wineries, Jezreel, Maya, which is a new one, um, Hertzberg, Tulip. <laughs> Tulip Winery is a very interesting winery because it's run by special needs kids or people. Um, Tabor, we've bought wines. Rabbi Simon has bought wines and has put out a... Uh, um, put out notes on, on, on his analysis of the wines. They're very nice wines. Um, they do have both Meshuvah wines 
and kosher wines that have been kashruted by Orthodox rabbis in Israel. Uh, at least the Jezreel winery does. Um, so you can, you'll see the choices of wines, but the main thing you have to do is put in the FJMC code as a coupon code. Did I answer that for you? Yes, thank you. Hello, this is Todd. I, I just have a quick question. I want to make sure I understood the numbers. So uh, I'm missing $3, and if you could just tell me which $3. So it's $6 to Vineyard, $3 to our men's club, one to Seaboard, two to FJMC, three to operating expenses. What's the other three? So, so it's $2 to the administrative costs of Wine on the Vine, and the other $4 goes to uh, the other charities that, Wine on the Vine or the Israel Innovation Fund supports up and coming God. Israeli artists and up and coming Israeli actors. Other people, I've given myself a significant donation to that part of the charity as well uh, to help, help that get that off the ground. And these young up and coming people are who produce your videos and our videos that we're seeing. Got it. Thank you. Perfect. So one of the things that, that, really attracted me uh, to this besides the other things is that I, I, I've learned over the years that you never want to make gifts to organizations that take more than 20 or 23 percent of, of the monies that are given to for, um, for charitable purposes and for administrative purposes. More than that is, is the charities aren't getting the dollars that you that you're putting into it. So that attracted me quite a bit compared to some of the other ones that we looked at. So are there, again, I, I, I got the part about the wines, thank you, and I copied that, um, the link. You know, is there cards that we can actually get and hand out? What do you mean cards? Well, so that, you know, the Sisterhood and all these other organizations, you know, you can go to the office at the synagogue and say, I want to make a donation, what are some options? And you can fill out a card, or you can actually get this card, and then you know where to write a check to, and you know who to send the recipient to, and things of that sort. So everything is done online, and all they have to do is go to the website, set up, a, uh, set up an account, uh, <coughs> purchase a vine, and uh, they would do it with credit card. Uh, I, I got I got what Jonathan has. I was asking. I think um, I think it's something we need to look at and maybe develop. Um, it could be a very interesting thing to be done, and uh, uh, we may not have all the information or all the marketing material at this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, what I will say regarding this is what I have found as we you know start talking about this program throughout different regions is we find that a lot of the issues are really local issues that sometimes it's difficult when you're looking at a, you know, from a larger, you know, from a higher point of view uh, to overlay all of that. So I would suggest this, um, talk to Eric and, you know, we can maybe have a conversation about how do we develop that for a, a specific uh, club. You may have some, some needs that are uh, different than some other areas that we may not necessarily be addressing on this call but that may be very important. And that I think what one of the things, Jonathan, you just talked about can be a very important way of doing it. Um, you know, I mentioned about, do, does your synagogue, does your club, do you have a, a newsletter or a, something that goes out on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis to your, to your congregants? Yeah, we have a, um, a monthly newsletter and a weekly newsletter. Uh, do they both or either one uh, take advertising or information from the men's club? Yes, both. So if we created some kind of uh, editorial or some kind of page that talks about the, the men's club and this particular program, would they publish that? Um, yes, the fact that it's a nonprofit, that it supports Israel, and that it supports a, an inshul club, sure. Do you think that would work? That I don't know. I would need to... Um, file. I'm going to send a detailed email on this to um, Steve Levin, and he and I can chat about this. We actually have a board meeting um, next Sunday, okay. so I'm sure he and I will chat about this. 
Okay. Eric? Uh, John, uh, I'm willing to sit with you and Steve uh, um, offline. We can uh, go over this if you'd like. That might uh, I, mean, I have some ideas for what you want to do. Well, you know, we're a club that did, um, you know, that took a, a, a short break. Um, we had a good year last year. This year is going to be interesting to see how, you know, we're going to do all of our program virtually. And um, it's going to make, from a lot of the, uh, the, the smaller men's club, it's good, this is going to be a make it or break it year. I know. We it's, know that. So we've been it's been a challenging year of all of us, and we've been doing a lot of brainstorming. How can we have events that are going to pique people's interest yet send their annual uh, membership fee in? One well, that's the other John, thing we're that's the other thing we're here for to help you in general yeah. with that kind of stuff. John, too. one of the key um, takeaways from this, um, and and I can't stress this enough. I, I mean, I've gotten more questions uh, from different clubs. What do we get for the eleven dollars dues that we pay for FJMC? This is major. This is this is a major payback you know, for for a club uh to participate in uh in fjmc because this is a a fundraiser where everybody wins and and it's a and and the, the um the, the point is it is sustainable uh for um in, in any number of reasons so let's let, let's chat after after online uh maybe you you and and steve and i can can talk about uh uh if i can help um, just, uh, my task is to is to work with you guys uh, this year. Is, uh, well, from the you know, I was just wondering if you know we're trying to come up with some events, and I'm just wondering if we could do some sort of a, a make this into a men's club program event, talking about this, mm -hmm. talking about the wine product itself, and you know. How does it support all of these Israeli um, um, wineries, charities? Um, and you know, even if you are not a partaker of wine, you know somebody that does. And um, I'm thinking to myself, maybe we can make this some to some sort of a virtual event. And quite honestly, maybe it's not just you know our synagogue alone, but maybe we could do it with multiple synagogues across the country. Those are great Interesting. thoughts, Jonathan. And, yeah. uh, and Adam, the CEO, would be more than happy to do a wine tasting party with all of you, where you purchase some wines and you, and you talk about them. And, and, and it was a lot of fun. We did it with our committee. I mean, I think it's a good idea. If we can get the wines in advance and you buy them and you have them sitting on your dining room table and you have this virtual wine tasting you know you say okay now pick up this bottle of wine and this is what it tastes and this is where it's coming from and if it's even you know made by folks that with special needs i think that would even be a, a really cool thing so i'm going to challenge you jonathan make a date in october say or sooner and i will we will get adam to do this party we'll help you put it on and get get all the attendees the only way we're going to do this is by by taking a great idea like you had, and let's let's get it done. So, and, and our committee's more than happy to help you. But I think it'd be good if we could get other other um, congregations and maybe even other regions together. But yeah, me and Steve can talk to you about this offline. Perfect. Yeah, good idea, Bob. How are we doing on time? We're almost up to eleven o'clock. Uh, okay, I, I you got, don't want to go past. I got to drop off at eleven. I got okay. to so, do so, too. Uh, but I will share this. I'll upload the video to uh, to the FJMC YouTube channel and share the link around with everybody uh, on the on the call. Um, Give them both and, and with all, everybody in our region. In fact, I'll make it make it available uh, on the FJMC page. Give them both, hey, Aaron's and hey, my Bob, Bob and Aaron and, and Gary. What what I want to recommend to people is I I don't think they realize how how easy this really is. So if you can go to the website, which is www.wineonthevine.org backslash FJMC, that's wineonthevine.org backslash FJMC, you know, buy a vine. 
can you can you send that as a can you send that as a yeah, chat? Yeah, it's in the chat. I put it on the uh, yeah. chat. No. It's wineonthevine.org slash partners slash FJMC. Yes. Okay, it's in the chat. Okay, yeah, you're right. I just copied yeah. that. Yeah, again, and, and, and if you go there, if you go there, you know, buy a vine today. Buy it in honor of somebody. Just see how e how easy it is. I I've probably bought. 25 to 30 vines in the last couple of months, last month or so, just an honor and memory. Of it is so easy. It takes me less than five minutes. But you once, know, once you register, now it's less than that. Coming up on the season of remembrance, maybe that's another way of marketing it. Yeah. That's why we want to get this going before the holidays. Mayor? I have some uh, technical feedback about that website. I don't know if it's for this call or not, but I'm concerned about everyone getting credit for the purchases the way the website is set up? Good, good question. So if you go to the FJMC website and you purchase a vine, you will, you will have a sign in for your name. And as you go, as you purchase the vine, you'll get drop down boxes that tells your region and tells your club. And once you do that, it, it's, a, we get a report at the end of each month. And at the end of each quarter, we will make the distributions to the region who will in turn make the distributions no. to your clubs. Right. So you need I to understand through, that, you need but to do this through the FJMC website then not through wine on the vine. That's right. Right. Either if way. someone doesn't use that link, then they won't get Mir, the FJMC Mir, options to get credit. Mir, can you, could, can you confirm that if you, you have to go through the FJMC um, site first? So you don't have to. No. No. Or not the FJMC site, but the FJMC link at the end of their domain name. If you put yeah. wineonthevine.org, it'll go directly to wine on the vine. F you will not get credit. But if you put wineonthevine.org slash FJMC or slash partners slash FJMC, you will see a big headline that says FJMC. Right. And, and that's you, my concern because Mary Sue at the congregation will remember wine in the vine in her head but she won't remember she's supposed to have slash FJMC at the end. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I agree with you, Mir. And then also, I purchased a, a Vine, and when I go back to the site, if I just go back to the site and log in because I have an account, it won't remember that I previously purchased via FJMC, and I won't have those drop-downs again. You have to go to that link every time. You go to Gary, let's, I, I think what Mayor is bringing up, we should take offline because these are our concerns that I know that uh, you and I have talked about as well. Uh, but, but I think we're going to, uh, you know, not, not resolve it here, but I think we need to know what it is and address it. Thank you. All right. Uh, Other than that, I love the program. I, I, think, I, think, I think the program is great. And right now we are going through this vetting process here. Uh, we're all at the very beginning of it. So that uh, there are a lot of good questions. Uh, regarding the marketing, regarding the technical and everything else. I, 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 would, you know, I have more on my, uh, on my FAQs that I have, but I'll forward that to Eric. He already has a copy and he'll forward it all to you with this. A lot more information, including website uh, URLs and also the process and what have you. The thing I want to stress last is that you're not alone. Uh, we have a committee. We have focals. We will work with you. If all we do is just have a training meeting and all of a sudden we walk away, this will, I hate to say it, will die on the vine. If we have the ability to work together and, and go through these questions and resolve them on one on one basis, whatever we need to do, whether it's the marketing questions or whether it's technical or whatever it could be, uh, we, will, we will work with you and we will share with others. Uh, so that I'd like to make sure an emphasis and your direct contact is Eric. Uh, he's very responsive, uh, and he will get whatever information to us or, or back to you. Anyway, let me give it back to Bob. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Great job. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, Eric will be in touch, and we'll get the link out to this session so everybody can share that, and we'll get it out to the clubs and get it posted, and Eric will share the materials, right? Sure. Um, uh, also, uh, do I have, um, do we have everybody's email uh, that, that participated today? Because I do have, um, uh, I, I will be forwarding uh, the materials that Aaron is, is saying, you know, he's sending me. I'm sending you mine right now. Okay, you have my email, right? 
I'm just putting it right here on the chat. Oh, okay. Okay. I just sent it to everybody. Oh, that's great. Got it. All right. Uh, I'm going to send you a, a follow-up email here um, shortly. And, and, and copy Steve Levin, please. I have Steve's email. Okay. Aaron, if I could say one thing, just uh, maybe for Jonathan and some of the newcomers. During our um, original meeting with all the uh, regional focals and the regional presidents, I had purchased a, a boutique vine, which is 10 vines or, or a uh, small vineyard. And I printed out a certificate, and, it's, and it looks like this, which is a very, very pretty certificate. I don't know if it's backwards to you. But when you do the registration and you pay for it, you could write in here whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And if you put in the recipient's email, it will be automatically sent to the recipient that you purchased the vine for. In this case, I bought the, uh, a vine in honor of my three grandchildren who happened to live in Jerusalem. And I wrote that we're supporting Israel and, uh, what does it say here? I said, supporting Israeli products and growing our future. So that had like a double entendre with growing the vines in Israel and growing our grandchildren. But I just wanted to let you know that if you do put in the recipient's email address, they will receive it as soon as you pay for it. So you don't have to wait until mail it. You could actually get this and it's very, very beautifully in color. And this says the name of the vine that I bought it from and you could write whatever you want. So it's something that uh, is almost automatic. So. You know, aside from the wine product, it's not too far different, correct me if I'm wrong, with, um, you know, planting a tree in Israel. Correct. But this one produces money right. and for everybody. It actually but is planting different. a tree is helpful to Israel, but this is growing a product that could be uh, regenerated all the time. Right. <clears throat> all right. I had a long talk with my rabbi about this, and it is significantly different. Because uh, that was a concern of ours is whether we're going to be competing with uh, JNF, and um, he felt that it's a totally different program with totally different uh, uh, options. And JNF is is you know uses a different format at this point in time. Folks, I got to drop off. Thanks, Sean. Jonathan. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. I'll look forward to uh, future zooms. Yeah, okay, I, I just forwarded you uh, a bunch of material. No problem. Take care. Have a great day, everybody. You too. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Good week. Okay. Thanks, guys. I think we're uh, we're wrapping up. We're good. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Aaron, uh, Gary, Eric, Eric, Eric and uh, great questions. And Bob. Okay. See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye, guys.